What's up everybody, creating outlines just got a whole lot easier with 2.93, let's look at how. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. So today we're gonna to be going through how to use the new Blender 2.93 line art modifier. This modifier is super easy to use and it works in the viewport. I'm going to be using this free mech model as an example so you can follow along if you like. I'll explain where to download it and how to get these free materials, but for now, let's hop into how to use the modifier. So here in the scene, I've imported our mech model with a simple EV lighting setup. And this actually works in both EV and cycles and it works in the viewport, which makes it pretty strong and a lot more useful for kind of figuring out outline work. So the modifier is actually drawing on top of our mesh using a grease pencil object. So we'll actually need to create a grease pencil object to actify the modifier. So what we're gonna do is hit shift A here and we're gonna add a grease pencil object. Now I'm going to add a stroke because this will come with materials on it which will be handy in a second. So let's go ahead, add a stroke here. I'm just gonna drag this out in my collection manager and I'm just gonna leave that name stroke. I'm gonna tab into edit view here. I'm gonna press A to select everything and then I'm gonna press X and delete those points. And I'm gonna go back out into object mode. Now to select it, I'll need to grab it up here in the outliner. And I'm gonna come down here to the modifier wrench. I'm gonna add modifier and you'll see that we have a line art under here over generate. So let's go ahead and click that line art. And first you'll see that nothing happens and that's because we need to set targets. So we'll be looking at all of these settings, but for now, let's just go ahead and apply our line art to our object. And then after that, I'll deep dive into the settings. So what we need to do first is choose our source type. So you can choose collection, object, or scene. So we only have one object in the collection, but let's just go ahead and choose object for now. And then we're going to select our mech. So I'm just gonna grab mech there. And you'll see nothing still happened because we need to create a target layer and a target material. So this is where the stroke comes in handy as the object to add because it already has layers and target materials on it. So let's go ahead, add our target layer. Let's choose lines. And for target material, let's go ahead and choose a color. I'm gonna choose black. And you'll see that immediately, we get some lines drawn onto our object with a grease pencil. So these are all actually grease pencil strokes. So if we come to our stroke up here and we click down here, we can change all the settings here on these strokes to make it whatever color or size we want pertaining to the grease pencil materials. But let's go back to the modifier tab because we can pretty much do everything we want in the modifier. So you can see that the line works looks pretty good here, but one thing I wanna point out that you may notice is one, that it's intersecting into the geometry. So we'll fix that in a second. And then also as you rotate around, you'll see that the lines here are kind of smearing across. And that's because it's actually drawing the lines from the point of the camera. So if I turn back on my camera over here, let me turn on my extras. You'll see I have the camera facing here. And because it's facing there, you can see how it's almost drawing that line kind of smashing over the top of it. But if I switch to my camera view, you'll see that line's not visible. And although some of those lines cause artifacts from behind, I have yet to see any appear in my camera viewport when rendering. But you can see that if I take my camera and actually move this around and it's gonna be kind of laggy because this is hard. You can see how those lines are actually adjusting, but it'll still look fine in the camera viewport. So just keep that in mind when working and don't panic. So let's go back, click our stroke here and actually go through some of these kind of basic settings. We'll walk through all the settings, but I'm gonna take care of the style first so that we can go ahead and make this look a little bit better. So I'm gonna snap into my camera view so I can see what it looks like there. I'm gonna turn off the extras for now so that I have a cleaner view. And then what I'm gonna do is change the thickness. So this will of course change the thickness of the line and this will of course change the opacity of the line. So I want these to kind of be more thin so that it looks a little more kind of technical on the mech. So let's start with 10. And we'll see that we're getting kind of much thinner lines and I like the look of that. So let's address the other issue. The fact that it is kind of intersecting with the geometry here. So what's happening is that it's actually drawing along the edges of the geometry. And because of that, we're kind of seeing it intersect with the actual geometry. So a simple way to fix that is make sure you have your stroke selected, come down here to your object properties, come down to the viewport display, and there'll be this option to put it in front. Now this will make it render in front of everything, but in my experience, that hasn't caused any issues. So if I click in front, you'll see that now those lines appear much smoother because they're rendering in front of everything else, including the object. Now, if you have multiple objects in your scene, you may need to be a bit careful about these settings, but considering we're doing a single object, this is fine. You could also do it through compositing, but that's a lot more complicated and a bit unnecessary when we have this one object. So now that we have this kind of basic setup, let's run through the rest of these features and what they do. 
So first up, as I said, we have the source type, so you can set to collection, object, or scene, so you can do entire scenes or kind of like space it out. I recommend breaking it down into collections or objects so that you can kind of adjust per object as needed because you may not want the same settings on your background layer as you do the foreground character. So let's go ahead and zoom in a bit here. So first up, we have edge types. These are all the different edges that it's going to draw a freestyle line on. So first we have contour. If we click this one on and off, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's the contour of the object that we have it applied to. So let's go ahead and turn that back on. Material borders will add a line wherever you have a material border. So for example, this light green here and this mid green and this dark green could all be separated by lines using material borders. Edge marks actually works just like freestyle lines, so you can actually go in here and manually set lines. So let's go ahead and turn everything else off so we can see how that works. So if I tab into here and I turn back on my viewport there, and I'm gonna just grab this edge right here, select it. I'm gonna go to edge, then I'm going to mark freestyle edge, and then I'm gonna tab back out on the object mode and we can see that it's drawn a line there. This is extraordinarily useful for having complete control over your edges and where those are. We have intersections here, which actually will work with collections and other things. So if objects are intersecting, it'll draw a line where those intersect. And then we have crease here, which is based off of this angle number down here. So if I go ahead and set this to 30, you can see that it's looking at 30 degree or greater like angle increases. So basically the lower this number, the less lines there's going to be. But if I go ahead and crank this all the way up to the max, which is 180, you'll see that it actually not only draws on all of the edges, but it'll actually draw where the polygons are too. So if I tab into edit view here, you can see that it's drawing over all the faces. So let's go ahead, and I think the default setting of 140 is usually good enough. You may wanna change that more though if you're working on a character or something that's not a hard surface object. So let's come down here. So we have target layers, we have lines, and you can set that to any layer which can be found in the grease pencil there. And then of course you have the target material, which will use whatever material that you have. So you can come into the material and make all of your adjustments here if you want as well, which gives you a lot more control over the look of your lines. Remove doubles kind of works like a merge by vertices and will actually merge some of the grease pencil vertices that are near each other to give you an optimal look. So if you turn this on, it can sometimes help get rid of artifacts, which in our case, we didn't have any. Overlapping edges as contour will actually help draw lines when you have other modifiers on here, such as edge split or other types of geometry. So that can kind of help if you're not getting lines showing up with some of your modifiers. Instant objects will make sure that it draws freestyle lines on instance objects. So a great example of that would be that if you had a collection up here of grass blades and you were doing a particle system of grass, then this would not only apply to the grass blade for the singular, but it would apply to all the instance objects. So it would apply line art to everything in the particle system. Clipping boundaries has to deal with being near and far and kind of like the clipping planes that deal with the line art and basing off of that and adding edges there. We've already gone through style, let's skip down to the next few sections. So these three sections here, occlusion, chaining, and vertex weight transfer are all very advanced and it's highly unlikely you're going to use them, but we'll kind of go over the basic overview of what they are before we get down to baking, which is something that you're going to want to use a lot. So occlusion here has a range value where you can set different levels of occlusions and then you also have a transparency option which you can base off of these different levels of occlusion to give you more control over the visibility of your lines when doing complex line rendering. Chaining gives you options to kind of chain your lines together and vertex weight transfer allows you to use vertex weight info to transfer it into weight groups for when you're doing kind of your line art. Both of these options here are pretty advanced and not likely to be used by most users. Next, let's look at the baking option. So you may have noticed that as I was moving around or making adjustments that although this modifier is great, it is a bit slow. You can see here if I try and rotate my mech, it kind of lags and I'm on a decently powered machine. So I'm gonna come down here to stroke. You can actually bake it just like a simulation and that'll make it play back in your viewport much better. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to do that. So we're gonna turn this off for a moment, but if you'll notice that it still kind of lags and that's because turning off visibility doesn't disable it. You need to actually disable it in the viewport and suddenly you'll see my machine kind of returns back to normal. So what I have here is a simple spin here. So if you wanna preview what your line art's gonna look like on animation, you're gonna to wanna to bake it first. So let's go ahead, turn this back on. 
and you have a couple options here. So we have bake line art, which will bake the line art for this selected object. But let's say that you're going for a scene stylistically that has quite a bit of line art in it. Then you can actually bake line art all, and that will bake all of the line art in your scene so that you can preview that. And then clear operates the same way that you can clear on this object or all strokes. So if I go ahead here and click bake line art, and while that's rendering, let's take a minute to look at our sponsor. A bit about our sponsor. Are you looking to level up your 3D skills? Then a great place to look is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of incredible classes for creators. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. They have classes on Blender, character design, productivity, cinematography, illustration, business, and more. I'm a top teacher on the platform, and I host several Blender courses focused on characters in Blender. It's a great place to start learning Blender as I really focus on kind of the basics in these courses and trying to help level up. In my Your First 3D Character, Character class, I'll walk you through the process of modeling and texturing your first 3D character. This class focuses on the basics and it's made for beginners to Blender. It's curated specifically for learning and there are no ads. They're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial premium membership so you can explore your creativity. So as great as this is, it actually does kind of take quite a bit of time to bake. So just be patient if you're on a lower end machine. I'm on a faster machine and it still took me a good two, three minutes to bake this one simple rotation with a low poly character. Now, I don't know what type of machine you're on, and it's not explicitly listed in the documentation yet where that baking occurs, but I believe it occurs on a single processor. So kind of depending on your single processor core speed may kind of, you know, results vary on that. But you can see now that we have it baked, we can actually play it back perfectly in the viewport, giving us a great preview of our scene. And again, if we pull out here behind and snap, we can play and we can see those lines kind of jittering all about as it's kind of trying to generate those for the camera view. So just keep that in mind if you're running, running around in your scene. Let's go back to the camera view and you can see that none of that is visible on the camera. So that kind of covers how to use the line art modifier. So next let's take a look at this mech. So I picked this mech because it was a free, royalty free, low poly mech from CG Traders. So there's a link to that in the description below. And I also went ahead and created these materials myself. So I'll post a link in there if you want to use my materials, but the download also has his materials too, if you prefer the look that he had. I didn't see any way to support the artist on the website, but there is a hiring option. So maybe you can contact them if you're interested in hiring them to do additional work like this. As usual, thank you for watching, and I love seeing what you create from this tutorial, so please tag me at Southern Shadi on Instagram. You can follow me there to keep up to date with kind of all my tutorials and projects that I'm working on. And if you'd like to see how I texture the mech with my process, you can check that out on Patreon as well. I'll have a full recording of that up there too. Again, thank you for watching, and I can't wait to see what you create.